Welcome to YouTubers Love Excel number 50. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link and download the workbook YouTubers Love Excel 49 to 52. Hey, trick number 50. This YouTuber said, hey, how do I create a basic macro and add a form button and assign that macro to a form button? Hey, let's look at a great example here. We have a little loan schedule, and down here there are automatic formulas so the, the person can enter data. How about making a macro, just a simple one that deletes the cell, and then we can assign that to a button here so we can just click on it and we'll automatically delete it, and then the, the user can just enter the data. Hey, how do we uh, create a macro? Well, first you got to have the developer ribbon. And the way you add the developer ribbon is going up to the orb and then Excel options. Orb and Excel options right there. However, since there's so many cool things in the options, you got to know the keyboard shortcut. And the way the Alt keyboard shortcut works in 2007, I'm going to hit Alt. Oh, look at that, a bunch of little letters and numbers. See the F there? That means that when you hit F, it opens up the orb. You see Excel options down at the bottom, which you can't see, Alt F. See there's a little I there. That means that's how you get to Excel options. So I'm going to use Alt F I. And then right here under Popular, the very first thing that shows up, it says Show Developer Tab and Ribbon. So you got to select that and then click OK. Now Macros, we go up to Developer and um, this one right here. Uh, record macro, that one's the show the list of macros. Right there, there's a record macro. Also in 2007, uh, you can click this down here. Now in 2003, I still have the keyboard memorized, it's Alt T M R to record a macro, which is the tools menu, macros, record. Um, so developer, and then this one right here, and it will start. Now what is a macro? A macro is just a uh, tape recorder. If you do something in the sheet, it secretly behind the scenes actually writes the code for you. So you don't have to know how to write code to do simple kind of uh, code operations. Now the reason why we're writing a macro here is because we don't want to go click in this cell, delete, click in this cell, delete, click in this cell, or highlight and delete. We just want it to do, do it automatically with a button. So we will uh, create a macro and we'll, we'll type the name delete content and we're not going to assign a um, keyboard shortcut which we could but we're not going to we want it stored in this workbook because it's only going to be used in this workbook and I'm going to put a description here delete uh, variable content in loan sheet. Now as soon as you click OK, you'll see down here whoop, it turns to a stop button. Uh, in 2003 a little little teeny uh, toolbar appears with this stop button. You can also go to tools macros stop also. Now as soon as we start doing something it'll record the macro. So I'm going to highlight this. Notice um, if we go up here we can see that that is the relative reference button and it's not selected so it's recording an absolute cell reference. In earlier versions that little button was actually on the stop button so there was a stop and a uh, relative absolute. And we want absolute so when we click and highlight those cells in the code it says hey C5 to C8 locked. Now I'm going to hit the delete key and click in the, the top cell right here. Now I'm going to hit stop right there or developer stop right there. Boop. Now we need to add a form button and assign this macro and actually we'll fix those uh, formulas there in just a minute. Let's go to the developer and we want insert and we're going to add uh, this button right here and we can add a label. Notice what happens to your cursor. It's a little uh, teeny thin thin crosshair so I'm going to click and drag, click and drag. Immediately it pops up assign macro. So I'm going to double click this. And then we're going to edit the name here. By the way, in 2003, um, if you want to add this button, you would right click. You'd right click any toolbar, and there's a forms toolbar that you add. 
here in this uh, this version it's right here so that's how you add the forms toolbar and it's a floating toolbar and then you click on that command button now I'm gonna click here and if you accidentally click out here we need to we don't want to click on it because it will do the action you want to right click to activate it and you want to make sure that kind of dotted lines around it. and then you can just simply uh, uh, highlight the button word there and type Man, I'm a bad timer. Del delete content. And you can point to the edge like that and drag it down. Delete content. I want to get rid of that one, too. Backspace, backspace. All right, uh, now let's uh, go ahead and see if this works. I'm going to click a $500,000 loan here. So I'm going to type. The years will be 30 not 330. The annual rate will be 8.00%. It's pre-formatted, so that percent symbol pops up. And the number of periods per year will say uh, 52. Now, if I want to immediately delete it, I just click boop, delete, and I'm ready to go again. This loan is going to be 400,000. The years will be 25. The annual rate will be 10, and the number of periods will be 12. Oh, look, I have a little drop down. I'll select 12. Now, how in the world do we fix these formulas here? Hey, let's click our new button here. Divide by zero. Now, I'm going to show you a 2007 and a 2003 method. In 2007, I'm going to edit this, and there's a great new function. It's called if error. If error. This did not have, it, exist in earlier versions. It has the value, and then comma, and then what we want to put in the cell if there's a, an error. So I'm going to put comma, and then quote, quote close parentheses. That is so cool. We will compare that very efficient method with our new if error function to how we did in earlier versions. Um, we clicked at the beginning or up here. I'm going to click right here and I'm actually going to scroll over and you said if and you uh, then put is error So the, uh, this is an is error, and it's asking, is this whole pay payment function, is that evaluating to an error? So this is a true false, which is what you need in an if function for the logical test. Is this an error? It's either true or false. Comma, what do we want to put in the cell if it's true? You actually have to highlight that whole function again very carefully without the green parentheses control C and the very carefully click out here you should probably be doing it up here it's safer up there Whoop. and control V that's what to put in the cell if true and then comma to get to the next argument and then double quote double quote close parentheses that's what to put in the cell if it comes out as uh, an error uh, sorry, not an error. This is what to put in. Oh, I have this backwards. If if it is an error, oh, I have it backwards. So I'm going to copy that. Control X. Yeah, the value. If this is an error, what we want in the cell is blank. I'm glad you guys were paying attention to let me know there. And then comma, what do we put in the cell if it's false, which means it's not an error, is the PMT. And then hit Enter. Let's look at that one again. I messed that one all up, but that's how you do it in earlier versions, or one way to do it. Now we can uh, try it again. We'll try uh, $5,000 here. Years, five. Annual rate, 9%. Uh, and the number of periods per year will say two. And there it is. There's our function. And then hit delete. So that's how to uh, create a little simple macro, add it to a form button, and then fix some formulas with if error and an if with an is error. All right, see you next YouTuber trick.